Disclaimer, this video was posted before the actual live stream so please withhold your comments if you watch this video after the aforementioned stream. Patch 2.1 is just a few weeks away and the live streams to the recent patches are a great way for our lovely friends at MiHoYo, please give me primo gems, a great way for MiHoYo to flex how good they are at making and managing their game. It's also a good hook video for any upcoming player to get an impact and get them hyped to spend their hard-earned money on 3D, that's right, 3D waifus and climb mountains with them. And finally, to pull back every person who quit Genshin Impact after finishing the story quests. Going into this special program, we're gonna be either pitted <laughs> with devs flexing their chad energy on how good they are at making the game, or maybe the voice actors of each character's bantering on whatever scripted topic they were given and make it as natural as possible. And while watching all this, you're bound to miss a few details here and there. So I've set up some guidelines to what you should expect and what to be excited about, as well as this video serving as a template for any content on every livestream announcement video of MiHoYo. Here's 13 things to be excited for and to expect in the upcoming 2.1 Genshin Impact Special Program livestream. Right off the bat, the three mysterious islands. Every Genshin Impact player that's gone to the Grand Narukami Shrine has most likely seen these three islands in the distance. And if you're the nosy type, you would find images of possible islands coming in 2.1 or 2.2, especially in the Genshin Impact Wiki where you could see either locations, maps, or even concept arts for different islands in Inazuma. The names of these islands will only be speculations because they might change or they might be named differently as they release. But yes, the three islands are pretty different from each other. One island has a bunch of floating rocks and a big floating rock right in the middle, quite similar to the floating rocks below Grand Narukami Shrine. Basing our information from the 2.0 livestream, it does look a lot like the island known as Seirai Island. An island for the servants of Baal perhaps? Or maybe where the Kitsune Saigu resides? We don't know. On the other end, we can see a set of islands lined up in a circle. It's most likely none other than the island where the Sangonomiya clan resides, Watatsumi Island. We can say it is, judging from the Sangonomiya forward outpost on Yashiori Island directly on the first hill after going through Fort Bume. I'm not basing this off of leaks, but the locations itself and depending on how everything is placed around it. And then there's another island that has these three pointy mountains. Not much is known about this island other than being similar to the Tsurumi Island from the 2.0 livestream. It's said that the island was covered in dense fog and that no one has ever been there for years. Basically, we have no idea <laughs> what this island might have. And the devs also didn't say anything of interest about this island, apart from its fog and very remote and solitary state. Wuwong Hill Part 2, I guess? Next, at number 2, like in previous teasers on special programs and live streams, there's a high probability that we get some new story teases for both us, the traveler, and the characters we meet throughout Inazuma. We'll be getting a continuation of the Shogunate vs the Resistance story cutscenes, some highlight videos on the new character banners, and their own short story exposure. We might also get another bit of story teases for Kazuha's and Beidou's relation to everything that's happened in Inazuma. Based off of story quests and how MiHoYo leads it, we could get more info on the following characters. The Raiden Shogun herself, Yei Miko, the Sangonomiya Resistance, Sara Kujo, and Princess Kokomi of the Sangonomiya clan, as well as being the leader of the Sangonomiya resistance. We might get some more info on Ayaka and Yoimiya, as well as Kazuha and Beidou in the story itself, and since the Kamisato clan is the head of the Yashiro Commission, and Yoimiya's family having a slightly secretive reputation of hiding people who have visions and making counterfeit visions to trick the Sakoku decree. Kazuha and Beidou was recently seen in the latest cinematic where we fought off against Kujo Sara and her lackeys. Next at number 3, as announced by MiHoYo themselves, Aloy is coming in 2.1. She is a free 5 star cryo bow user, along with her own weapon as well. A 4-star weapon, sadly. Apparently, she can only be unlocked by console players. But luckily for us, you can easily log in our MiHoYo account into any PS4 console and claim her. Or if you don't, you could always borrow someone else's console for like 30 minutes, open the game there and grab it just like that. Any person will do, even if you barely know them, just ask. Who knows, maybe we'll be great friends right after. Hopefully, MiHoYo made Aloy skip well, since she'll be up against quite a lot of top-tier characters, namely another bow user, and Cryo at that. At number 4, while we move Move on to the new quests, new story, and possibly new enemies, we might be having ourselves a new trans domain, either in the form of Raiden Shogun herself, much like the child domain in Liwei, and be summed up with a huge cinematic fight on one of the new islands. Or we might also fight a completely new enemy trans domain, maybe the omnipresent god that Raiden is making, with its own separate story quest away from the main path that we follow in the Archon quest, with some form of story cohesion, ending with getting some small insights.
info to our journey as the traveler. Number 5 in the most recent special program, 2.0, the devs spoke a lot about the new lore and how everything runs in Inazuma, separate from the actual storyline and our conquest lines being fed to us directly. Anyone interested in side quests and miscellaneous radiant tasks would be excited to hear about what the devs think of their extras in the game, as well as mentioning their design decisions for the present and future content they've released and have prepared for future patches. We'll most likely get a few bits of lore here and there for the new content we're getting in 2.1. Next, as new areas are released and unlocked in Inazuma, we'll most likely also find a bunch of new mob types and enemy bosses to fight, especially with the three possible new islands, either releasing at the same time or releasing one at a time for every patch, we're bound to get new enemies to fight either way. That and along with some new materials for either ascension or for crafting some new weapons. This would also mean new items sold on the trade depot for our teapot since new locations would most likely have some new form of fauna and animals and any sort of material that they could give us. Number 7, from the previous livestream, we learned a lot from both the new characters and their relations to each other and the lore of Inazuma itself. Now different from the world building that I just mentioned, this is more focused on the linear story that the traveler and the main characters of the game's relations and story between each other. I'd be glad to know why and how Zhongli and Ye know each other. And I also want to find out more about Ayaka's sibling Ayato and how he fits into the situation of Inazuma right now. Other bits like Goro and Sara's backstory as well as their allegiance to their respective leaders. I'm sure that if the devs or DMCs speak of anything to shed a little bit of light about Raiden Shogun's actions, at least enough for us to have something to go on would help me sleep better in my teapot. At number 8, it's no surprise that obviously it wouldn't be a special program without the special Primo Gem codes worth a whopping 2 to 5 wishes. Now if Meoyo would give us even more, either way we'd be happy. We gotta have as much spare change as we can and save as much as we can for the waifus and husbandos that we pull, right? At number 9, with the new update coming up, we are bound to expect new characters and their respective weapons. And so far, we pretty much already know who's coming next based on Mihoyo's own leaked character cards. But we might be in for a surprise with the ones that didn't get a character card from Mihoyo. Characters like Sara, the Shogun, and Kokomi are bound to get banner releases and info as well as a chance to being shown in the teaser that every special program features in their live streams. Characters like Yai Miko or Goro and maybe Toma as well as some other new character that we haven't even heard about might get a preview or at least 5 seconds of exposure time inside of one of the teasers that they show us. Weapons coming to 2.1 will only be wielded by whoever the new character is going to be featured on the teasers themselves. We can either expect new weapons for Raiden Shogun, Sara, and Kokomi. But if Mihoyo decides to show another new character or maybe another new weapon that isn't related to any new character, we wouldn't mind either way. Number 11, if we don't get a copy of the previous stream where the devs were speaking and talking about how good they are <laughs> at their game, we might get another set of new chibi characters as MCs for this next special program. But if you're going to watch the CN live stream, we might just get some new faces and voices to enjoy. Up at number 12, with every patch, there's always a few events and little mini games that we can play for some spare change and to have something to play while we wait for the next patch. As for which event will be coming, we won't know unless Mihoyo actually posts it since Mihoyo probably just spins a wheel and throws darts to determine which game we play. But there is a possibility for a new event to take place. With Inazuma still being in its infant stage, Mihoyo most likely has plans for new events for each patch. Finally, at number 13, just like in every other live stream and update stream, at the end of their discussion and after finishing all the new trailers, we get a new chibi character with either whoever is in the trailer or a new chibi altogether, just like having Ayaka at the end of the 1.6 live stream and Yai Miko in the 1.5 live stream. And those are the 13 things you should be excited and should be expecting in the 2.1 special program livestream. As well as this being a template for pretty much any livestream that Mihoyo is going to release anytime soon. Let me know if this hits the mark or not because this video is basically just me anticipating what's coming to us for the next few patches. Anyway, that's gonna be it for the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated for my videos and comment down below if we actually did hit the mark on what's gonna come in the livestream. Stream. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <coughs> Outro party. Oh, it's, it's, it's raining. Can you guys hear that? <clears throat> Type OP in the comments if you're still here watching. And I'm going to show you my Raiden artifact set. Okay, here it is.
I'm almost done farming for the Shogun, Raiden Shogun's artifact set, which is the emblem of Severed Fate, <clears throat> because her kit is basically max up energy recharge, as much energy recharge as you can, and then just and then just put crit and attack wherever possible. <clears throat> so the crit rate and crit damage ratio is kind of good. I'm still uh I'm still cutting. I'm still lacking in in crit rate, but I'm adding the bonus crit from the spear on that website. Holy crap! It's raining so hard here. <laughs> And I might swap a few artifacts because right now I'm running times I'm running two attack stats, attack main stats, which are the sands and the goblet, but the energy recharge that we need is already up to near 200 <clears throat> from just artifacts alone. I might change to an energy recharge um, sands and maybe an, an electro damage bonus for the um, for the goblet. But I'm, I don't know yet. But for now, this is how it's going to be for my Raiden set. <clears throat> as well as Raiden herself. Raiden's gonna have um, ER, ER Ascension and any <laughs> and getting any ER weapons gonna jump up or jump up or her energy recharge to about maybe 270 total ER on my current set. Hopefully we get um, Sara and Raiden in the same banner. But uh, I don't think Mihoyo isn't that nice of a company to <laughs> give two uh, two new two new characters like that, especially when they work together so well. I'd be happy with Raiden only first. And if I get her tailored weapon, then that's gonna be over 300 energy recharge. So depending on who or what's going to be the banner, I might just get Raiden only and try to lock out on her weapon, or I'll get both Sarah and Raiden, and maybe, <clears throat> and maybe if I'm lucky, get Kokomi as well. I'll be wishing you guys the best of luck in your pulls, and um, well for whoever you want and whatever you want. Hope you guys get it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye lam!